this is going to be Team Frosty the Snowman. Their app is called Parkify, and we're going to Sam, who's going to share some with us. Yep, thanks very much. Uh, welcome to our project presentation. We are Frosty the Snowman, consisting of Yi, Bowie, Neil, and myself, Sam. And today we're going to share with you our React Native app called Parkify, which is a social meetup app with a live chat feature, um, and all our events will be based in parks. So on the next slide, we'll go into a little bit more information. Um, we just thought that in the last couple of years, uh, an awful lot of socializing has to be has had to be done outdoors, and we thought um, we could take advantage of that and create an app to use um, our very nice Manchester parks to a bit more, um, yeah, use them a bit more often because I think we're, they're somewhat underappreciated, and I think um, people are potentially lacking a space to organize outdoor events. We're really aiming this at anyone who loves the outdoors, but um, some events would be more aimed at adults, such as parties, and picnics would be more aimed at families. Um, yes, I think without any further ado, let's uh, pass over to Yi, who's going to take us through a video demonstration of our app. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, can we just start our video? Thank you very much. Yeah, as you can see, that's a sign up page. Uh, we've got the form validation there. And in our login page, we have used the uh, JSON Web Token for our syndication. So once we looked in, uh, this is our homepage. You can go to events from there. You can see all the events by flicking through that. Or you can also go through the navigation button side. Go to anywhere, really. You can go to user page, for example. You can see all the hosted and attended events or a specific user, as well as some basic user information. Right, now let's go to create events. Let's create an event called the graduation party. Okay, as you can see, we have an integrated map feature down below, uh, which you can just uh, select the location using that map. And then we can submit. When we submit it, it will land it in the find the events page. As you can see, uh, let's go filter out and then find out the events we just created. It's over there. As you can see, all the details of events are there. And also, uh, any place has a name link uh, in blue color. You can click on it and you can look through the user profile that way as well. Uh, and now let's go back to the event page and let's go find the events called Sunday Run Day. Okay, so once we go into it, you can see already had some participants in it. Let's check out another feature called live chat. Um, so for the live chat, we use the Socky IO to do this. I'm sorry um, because we had the two screens, but it's cropped it down. But anyway, um, uh, or everyone in the chat can participate in this chat window, like we are just wasting, uh, waiting the third person to respond the message. Um, yeah, every single message is pushed into the, our Mongo database in real time. And so what's cool about our app is also that uh, for our chat app, every single event has its own chat room. So if you go into a different, chat, different event and then you, if you're trying to open the chat room, uh, the first thing it's going to do is fetch all the chat history and all the, all the chat history is completely different, depends on which room you're in and they are persist through. And if you don't like event, you can leave and your name will be removed from the participant list. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, I'll pass on to Neil to talk a bit more about the uh, front end. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Yi. Um, and yeah, so if we have our uh, front end slide. Yeah, uh, so you can see here um, two circles. On the left in the green circle are our incorporated technologies. On the right are ones that we explored in our testing phase, and we'll explain why we didn't uh, employ those in the end. Uh, so as you can see, we chose React Native as our main front-end framework. Um, during testing phase, we also tested Svelte Native, which we found was a, was a really exciting um, uh, platform. We liked the way it managed states, uh, but we found that the native version um, was not quite as mature as React Native. We had a bit of difficulty with the, uh, with the environment setup, particularly for myself and Sam, um, who, were, who were working on Ubuntu machines. Uh, so another great, great point for um, React Native was that it has this Expo package um, associated with it, which is a brilliant framework for, uh, for bundling your app for native and web environments. It was really quick and easy to set up, and we could get coding very, uh, very fast at the start of the uh, project. Uh, we chose Axios for making HTTP requests. Uh, we were all really familiar with that from previous projects on the front end, and we found it to be a really dependable choice. Um, for our live chat feature, we tested both Socket.io and uh, Pusher, which is a paid commercial package. Um, 
Uh, and we wanted to make sure that our chat history would persist with both of these packages. We found that none of them actually um, offered this functionality right out of the box. Um, so as you mentioned, we built that ourselves and we have uh, our chat history fetching from our back end. Um, so we chose Socket IO to run the actual chat rooms as it's uh, free and unlimited to use. Um, native apps require a little bit of a different navigation solution to, uh, to a typical React project. Uh, so we chose React Nav Navigation as our package to manage this. Uh, and in terms of overall language choice on the front end, uh, we decided on JavaScript as um, uh, we were taking on quite a lot of uh, new technology pieces uh, in this project. So we wanted, a, we wanted a dependable choice that we were all familiar with. Uh, so next, I will pass on to Bally on the next slide, uh, who will take us through our back end. Uh, thanks, Nain. For the backend, we are using Node.js with the uh, Express.js to build our REST API. We considered using Firebase since it provides a wide range of solutions, whether it's database, authentication, storage. We really wanted to explore different technologies, so we use MongoDB for our database. We considered uh, using Postgres, but we already used that for one of our North Coder projects. So we use MongoDB for our database, and we use JSON, uh, JSON Web Tokens to secure our API, so only authenticated users can access our API. We started working on AWS S3 for our storage, but we realized that uh, we're not gonna have enough time to implement that on our front end. So we end up using MongoDB Atlas to host, uh, host our uh, database. And finally, we have used Heroku to deploy our app. And next, Sam will talk about our agile practices. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thanks very much, Bali. Um, yeah, as you've said there, we had to be quite an agile team throughout this uh, project. I would say the main challenge in that regard was the fact that we're a split team. Um, myself and Neil are Manchester-based and Ian and Bali are in Leeds. So the two halves of our team have never actually met. But I have to say, I really feel like we have because the communication has been so strong, particularly in the second half of the project. Um, yeah, we had uh, stand-ups every morning to discuss the plans for the day and who's going to work with whom um, and on what. And at the end of each day, we had, a, as we called it, a stand-down meeting to, let's say, show off what we'd done and <laughs> complain about what we hadn't managed to do. Uh, and all of our workflow was quite well managed, I think, through the Trello board, which you can see on our screen there. Uh, we tidied that up <laughs> for the screenshot. wasn't always wasn't always that tidy. But, um, yeah, we... We also, I would say, a main challenge for us was React Native, particularly at the start. We had expected React Native to be um, more similar to React for web apps that we previously used uh, than it actually was. But we, yeah, we soon realized there was no HTML involved. There's just uh, React Native components. But we got our heads around that, as well as the complicated navigation system and the custom packages we had to install. And it was a lot of fun to use in the end. Um, I'd also say a huge constraint for us was, of course, time. Uh, I think we only had around eight days of coding in the end, um, over sort of two and a half weeks of the total project. After the testing phase, there's only about eight days of coding. Um, but we, yeah, I would say we're quite realistic about what we would and wouldn't be able to fit in in that time. And we, yeah, we constantly updated each other on what was what was going to be done in time in the back end or the front end. Um, and I think we'll, we'll talk a little bit later about some things we would have liked to implement. But I would say one thing which started as something of a, a stretch goal for us um, and actually was implemented very quickly was the live chat, the Socket IO live chat. And it was almost single handedly done by Yi. So I would say, well done, mate. It's, it looked good. And um, yeah, could you tell us a little bit more about that just now as well? Yeah, thank you, Sam. Yeah, uh, uh, regards to the Socky IO and live chat, because we think the live chats are such a core feature of our app. We definitely wanted the chat history can persist through uh, refreshes and also have to distinguish it, which uh, different events rooms have different chats and all the people can participate in, not just two people chat together, but a group chat as well. Um, so we have, sp uh, we have spiked out uh, different solutions, but none of those solutions actually uh, offered such feature to preserve the history out of box so we need to we develop our own database to deal with that the problem with socket io is that whenever the first person enters the room uh, it generates a new session id that is totally random because every time it always generates a new session id that's random 
made it difficult to distinguish the chat rooms and preserve, preserve the chat history. So what we did is we attach an event title to the session ID whenever a new session is opened. And, uh, and if next time the same chat room is opened, although the, soft key, uh, the session ID will be different, we're still going to attach the same event title to it and fetch the history queried by that event title. So all the messages with that event title will be fetched and everybody in the event will still stay together and the chat history is, is preserved through that way. And we also, uh, every message is sent with the event title as well. So that's how we achieve this. Um, and another problem we had with chat is that um, I find it the, the socket IO is a bit inconsistent with configurations between different versions. So different version has the different configuration you need to tweak with. Um, actually, the latest version doesn't work with React Native, the latest version of the React Native. So what we did is we just tried so many different versions. And in the end, uh, we used 204 on the server side socket IO and 211 on the front end socket IO. Uh, to do that, uh, which play nicely with React Native. We also have two backends of this project. So one of the backends is dedicated to Sock.io. That seems to work better and uh, quite happy with the end results. Um, yeah, that's value. And uh, I will pass on to Neil to talk a bit more about future plans. Thank you very much, Yi. And uh, again, great job on the chat features. Um, yeah, so as mentioned in our challenges section, we were on a very tight time frame for this uh, for this project. And our brief of a meetup app is something that could potentially expand into a lot of different areas. Uh, so we we had a lot of stretch goals uh, that we uh, that we could have explored, uh, and we'd love to share some with you now. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, sharing pictures between event and attendees. As Bali mentioned in the back end section, we were looking into Amazon S3 um, to potentially enable users to upload, store, and share pictures between themselves. Um, uh, this was originally an example of an MVP feature that we transitioned into a stretch goal afterwards. Um, we thought that we'd want to have this uh, feature really working 100% before we were comfortable putting it in the app. Uh, so we decided to keep it as a stretch goal for now. Um, Next, we'd love to implement the ability for users to follow different categories of, of events and follow other users. And to incorporate with that, we could uh, send push notifications to users um, you know, to let them know when a new event they might be interested in has been posted or when they've received a chat message uh, you know, from a friend. Um, finally, um, with any kind of meet up app or meeting people from the internet, safety is a very valid concern. Um, so we'd love to be able to implement some safety features, uh, you know, to verify users and allow people who use our service to be more confident about the people they might meet. Um, so one thing we'd love to, to explore, particularly in that regard, is uh, using facial recognition for verification. That's a feature that's starting to make its way into uh, dating apps, for example. And we think it's a really great idea and it's something we'd love to incorporate if we had more time. Uh, and so finally, for our last slide, um, I would like to say uh, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed uh, seeing our app, Parkify. Um, we've enjoyed producing it and presenting it to you. Uh, and so we'd love to take any questions that you might have.